Good morning. I just got in from milking. I've got a lot of milk. You can see a couple gallons on the counter right behind me. I've got more milk in the fridge. I've got a couple of quarts of cream in the fridge that I've skimmed off of my milk over the last few days. Anyway, I've got lots of milk. I've got lots of cream and I need to do something with all of this before it starts to sour. Raw milk doesn't really go bad, it just, but it does start to sour. So I wanna take care of it before that happens. This is just gonna be more of a vlog style video. I'm not gonna to totally break everything down step by step because I have blog posts on a lot of the stuff I'm gonna be doing, which is making butter, making mozzarella, making ricotta, using the leftover whey to then make something else. <laughs> We're gonna do a lot today with all of this dairy because none of it is going to go to waste. Everything you see here, all of the milk, all the cream, everything I have, I am going to use. And I think, let's see, one, two, three, four. It's probably about four gallons of milk, not counting the cream. So maybe like three gallons of milk and close to a gallon of cream. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is take some of the cream that I have and make butter. Now you can see that I've still got a lot of cream here on the gallons I had sitting on the side that I need to skim. Well, I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna start with the cream that I have skimmed, make butter out of that. And I don't know what I'll use this cream for, but we'll see. So that is straw in my hair. So yeah, very nice. <laughs> anyway, I use my food processor all the time to make butter. I am convinced it's the best way because you just put it in there, push a button, walk away, and there's no mess. I've used my stand mixer before and I know that's a really popular way to do it, but you have to put a towel over top and it still ends up just really, really messy. So I like to do it this way. While I wait on the butter, I'm just going to clean up the kitchen a little bit, starting with the stove top. I use baking soda and vinegar and it works really well. I don't like cleaning my stovetop, but I like when it's clean, <laughs> that makes sense. And then I still had some cream that I needed to skim off of some of the jars in my fridge, so I'm doing that. I'm not going to use all the cream for butter, but I'll make a lot of butter today. And then of course, the dishes, especially in the summertime, are never ending because there's just always something going on in the kitchen, whether it's canning or making things with all of my milk. It seems like the dishes never end in the summer. First batch of butter is finished. Before I finish this butter up by washing it and putting salt in it and everything, I'm actually going to start some more butter in the food processor so that can keep going. And I just wanna keep things rolling because I have a short window of time. Today is a school day. We, this is our morning break right now. We've already gotten a lot done. We did phonics, we did some reading. I, we did Bible study, catechism, and I milked. We did some farm chores. So I'm going to use this morning break to get as much done as I can before we have to get started again. I always save my buttermilk and some of it I culture. So the buttermilk that you buy at the store in the refrigerated section in like a carton, that is cultured buttermilk. It's really thick. It kind of has a sour, pungent smell to it. So when recipes call for buttermilk, they're typically calling for cultured buttermilk. That is why I culture it a lot and keep it on hand. But the thin buttermilk that, that comes off of the butter, I save that too. And I use that in any recipe that calls for milk, really. Pancakes, um, soups anything. You can use it in a lot of things. So here I'm just washing my butter. You want to get as much buttermilk out of the butter as possible to prevent it from going rancid. And once I finish <laughs> squeezing as much buttermilk out as possible, I look how pretty and yellow it is. Then I will add some salt, which I actually forgot to do in this batch. This is kind of where my day started to go wrong. <laughs> forgot to add salt to my butter, and then just shape it out and put it in the fridge to harden up a little bit before I cut it into sticks and wrap it to store it. I 
I'm just gonna keep this rolling and move right along with the next batch of butter. Okay, I've made my mind up on the cream. So I used two quarts of cream to make butter. I saved the buttermilk, poured it into my buttermilk culture that's sitting on the counter and that is going to culture until tomorrow and then I'll put it in the fridge. If that sounds crazy and you don't <laughs> know what I'm talking about, I will link the video on making cultured butter in cards and my recipe in the description. And now I'm going to move on to making mozzarella. Now, when I was skimming the cream off of my gallons, I left this one here. It wasn't a full gallon anyway, so I left about an inch of cream here because I'm going to use this milk to make some custard that I will then <laughs> turn into a pie. Like I said, we're gonna do a lot with all this milk because I wanna use all this stuff up. If I'm going to be using the milk for making mozzarella, then I just go ahead and skim almost all of the cream. But if we're gonna be using that milk in like cereal or I'm gonna be using it for baking or anything, then I like to leave about an inch of cream so the milk is richer and creamier. All right, I got these three partial gallons, probably, what is this? Almost two gallons of milk here, and I am going to make mozzarella cheese with this. Mozzarella is probably the easiest cheese to make. All you need is milk, citric acid, you need rennet, and salt, and it can be made in like 30 minutes. I've got a couple little bowls of water here to dissolve my citric acid and rennet before I get started. The ratio is one and a half teaspoons of citric acid for every gallon of milk and then a quarter teaspoon of rennet for every gallon. So I adjusted accordingly since I had a bigger batch. The citric acid that I dissolved in water, I pour that in first and then add my milk. And once my milk is all added into my big stock pot here, then I will just slowly heat it to like 90 around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Check it here. Once your temperature reaches 90, then turn your heat off and add the rennet that you dissolved in water earlier, and then just give everything a couple of big stirs all the way from bottom to top to make sure it's mixed in really well. Then put your lid on, set your timer for 10 minutes, and do something else, <laughs> but just walk away, leave it alone, don't keep checking it. Wait until your timer goes off and you can take your lid off and you will see that the curd has separated from the whey. Now this is where things started to really go wrong because I forgot to cut the curd. At this step, you're supposed to cut the curd using a knife and then let it sit a little while longer. I don't know what I was thinking. I just lost my mind and the rest of the day went really poorly. However, my mozzarella ended up turning out okay. So even though I started stirring it before I cut the curd, I just stirred it together, pulled it out, squeezed out as much um, whey as I could, and then went on with my cheese making process. So this is a really bad like tutorial video, but um, once I squeezed out the whey, then I heated up my whey that was left over in my big stock pot, put my mozzarella back in to heat it up, and I just moved on with my day. So as my cheese was heating up here so that I could stretch it, I pulled my roast out of the oven. I had put a roast in the oven earlier in the day and you guys will see why. This is something I always do on a big cheese making day. I roast something with bones, whether it is a beef roast or a chicken, but you're gonna see that I'm gonna need those bones. So. You can see that I just heated up my mozzarella there. That way I can stretch it and this is the fun part. <laughs> it's really hot though, so um, your hands will probably feel like they're on fire, but stretching mozzarella is just really fun. So you can see, even though I didn't cut my curd and I kind of messed things up, it's still looking okay. So I'm stretching it here. I wouldn't recommend doing that though. Don't skip cutting the curd. So I stretched it, added in some cheese, stretching again, then I'm now shaping my mozzarella into the classic ball of mozzarella cheese that we all know and love. And you can see it turned out okay. So since this was a double batch of mozzarella, I had split the curd in half earlier so it was easy to handle. It's really hard to stretch a giant batch of mozzarella, so, so I did split it in half and I um, ended up with two 
pretty balls of mozzarella cheese. Not bad considered I, considering I messed up my process, but oh well. So I didn't need to use this mozzarella right away. Um, it doesn't, mozzarella does not keep that long in the fridge. If you want to store it in the fridge, you need to store it in a brine of salted whey. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm putting some salted whey over my mozzarella. I'm gonna stick it in the fridge and use it within the next few days. Now I'm going to go right into making my ricotta. This is how I always make cheese. After I make mozzarella, I put all my whey back into my big stock pot and bring the temperature up to about 190 degrees. And I'll show you the next step, but while I'm waiting for this big pot of whey to heat up, I need to start wrapping some butter and get that stored. I try to multitask and just keep this ball rolling when I have a cheese making day because um, there's just a lot to do. All right, I'm wrapping up this butter here and then I'm going to go back over to my big stock pot of whey. I think it's about up to 190. So now I'm gonna add in my vinegar, which is how you make ricotta. It's as easy as that. Just take the leftover whey from your mozzarella, heat it up to about 190, add a quarter cup to vinegar to, for each gallon of whey. So I'm adding like a half a cup and then you will let it sit for five, 10 minutes and you'll see the rest of the curd that was left over from making mozzarella kind of separate, rise to the top. And all you have to do is pour it through a cheesecloth and catch your ricotta, which this is where this gets really funny because my favorite cheesecloth was dirty. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm just gonna try to use a flour sack towel. Like what could go wrong? I think this will work pretty well. No, you can see it's not working well. It's not holding its place. Oh my goodness, it just, this started to go really wrong. There were holes in my flour sack towel and it was really hot and steamy and leaking everywhere. I was starting to panic thinking, well, shoot, here goes my video. And as you can see, I'm getting a uh, whey ricotta facial here. This is getting really heavy. That was super heavy. I had to pull the stool over for support. I'm calling the kids in for backup, asking them to bring me different pots and stuff so I could try to figure out a solution here. Oh my goodness, you guys, this was not my finest hour. And at this moment, I was thinking, there, I'm just like fanning myself. I was thinking, I'm gonna scrap this whole thing, but I posted stories on Instagram and you guys really wanted me to post this YouTube video of me messing up my cheese making day. So. There you go, I finally transferred everything over into a cheesecloth, hung it up, and I did end up getting a small amount of ricotta, even though I lost a lot of it down the drain because I ended up having some spills, and yeah, I ran the way through my cheesecloth one more time, and my total yield was a pint of ricotta. That's kind of disappointing, because usually when I make a big batch like this, I get a quart or more, but oh well. I was still left with some beautiful golden whey that I will be able to use later. All right, let's move on to something else for a little bit. <laughs> I have some milk that I still need to use, so I'm gonna move on and make a pie. I actually am just making coconut cream pie. I've made this before for you guys where I broke it all down. I'll link my recipe in the description and link that video in cards, but this is just such a great way to use up a ton of milk. So I'm gonna get my pie crust ready to blind bake. There you go. Nice and pretty. This is my sourdough pie crust recipe, by the way. So I'll link that for you guys too. What a day it has been, man. All right, well, I have that half gallon from earlier. Remember I left like an inch of cream. Now I'm gonna do something with this. I am going to make a coconut cream pie. I don't know what order these videos will come out, but I have a video where I broke that whole process down. I made custard and pie and that will be if it's not already posted, it will be posted soon. These recipes are on my blog, but I need to make a coconut cream pie because the one that I made for the video, we cut into it and started eating it and I just didn't get the pictures that I wanted to get. So I wanna make another one so I can get some really pretty pictures. And let's be honest, coconut cream pie is just delicious. It's like one of my favorite things ever. So I'm not too disappointed that I have to make another one. Got my uh, vintage hand mixer here. No worries, guys. If we have to go off grid, I'll be just fine here in the kitchen. 
Actually, not in the kitchen. I'd be in the living room cooking on the wood stove, but we would be fine. I'm convinced we'd be fine. All right, I'm just finishing up my custard, my uh, coconut custard looking delicious. As always, it's uh, one of my favorites. And once I finish this up, then I will have to get back to what I was doing earlier. Wrapping some more butter. So you can see, I just kind of keep things going in a rotation, trying to stay busy and get this all finished in a timely manner. I'm just gonna put my butter in the fridge here with what I wrapped earlier and now, I, that my roast has cooled off a bit, I'm going to pull the meat off and shred it. I'm making shredded roast beef sandwiches tonight for dinner, so that will work out really well. And what I will be left with is the bones and the fat, and I'm going to use that to make bone broth with my whey. So I take the bones and I just pour my whey straight over them. Um, no water, so just whey bones and fat from whatever meat I had. If it's chicken, then I leave the skin in there too. And then I might add, and you know, I season that roast really, really well. So there's a lot of salt, pepper seasonings in here, but I will add some fresh herbs and maybe some vinegar and let this simmer overnight and it will turn into beautiful, rich, golden bone broth. What a day it has been. I'm not totally finished with everything from my raw milk recipes and cheese making and butter making day, but let's see what I've got so far. So I, I started with, what was it, three gallons of milk and I had two quarts of cream. From all that, I did skim some extra cream, but from all that, I got five sticks of butter. I got a pint of ricotta cheese. That should have been a quart. I make my cheese this way every time. I make mozzarella and then I make ricotta and I almost always do about two gallons worth and I always get a whole quart of ricotta cheese. So my flour sack experiment, catastrophe, disaster, fiasco, that is why I only got a pint of ricotta this time because I lost a lot of it when my flour sack kind of gave way and some of it went down the drain. And anyway, lesson learned. If your favorite cheesecloth is dirty, do not use a flour sack towel. It just doesn't work. But moving on, I got two big balls of mozzarella cheese and close to two gallons of whey that I poured over my beef bones from the roast beef that I made this morning. And now that is simmering away and that is going to be very rich and delicious bone broth. So as you can see, nothing went to waste and I got so much out of just a few gallons of milk. Cheese making may not have gone as planned, but everything else turned out delicious, so I guess it wasn't too bad of a day. Well, thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to hit subscribe and the like button before you go. I make new videos every week, so I will see you guys next time.